This is a crazy transition for both of us, and this is part of the process, part of what we're so excited about. The transition from Mexico back to America into a project that we don't yeah. yet know much about back to Portugal. At least that's the rough plan. But as plans go with us, you never really know. We're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since and are now searching for a place to call home somewhere soon. Subscribe and join the ride. In our last episode, after returning from three mesmerizing months in Baja, we shared with you our thoughts on moving abroad. Welcome. And while we're both eager to return to Portugal in pursuit of land to call home, First, we've been asked to be a part of a very exciting project in Utah's adventure Mecca. And by the end of this episode, you'll begin to understand why this opportunity and change of scenery was truly something we couldn't resist. Full tour of our dome at the end of the episode. Eee, it's amazing. Good morning. It's a very early start to the day. We woke up before 6 a.m., which it's been a while since we've done that, but for a very good reason. Yesterday we drove into Moab, and this morning we want to catch sunrise in Arches National Park. Not just anywhere though, but at the most beautiful spot, at least in our opinion, in the entire park, and that's at Delicate Arch. Now, this trailhead has over 12,000 reviews. It's definitely the most popular spot in the park, but because we'll be getting there for sunrise, I think it'll just be pretty magical. Are you ready? Let's go. Yay! And back into the front seats we go, full of anticipation for yet another day of unknowns. For yet another day of adventure. We did have to reserve an entry time, so we are allowed to enter the park in between 6 and 7 a.m. And it is almost 6.30, so it looks like we're doing good. And there's no line. So early morning, that's the ticket. Can you tell them that I was the one who urged us to go so early? It's very true. Hi there, how you doing? Excellent. Scan that QR code first. Can you need a bigger? That should work. You're all set to go? Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Arches, which is home to the highest concentration of natural stone arches in the world, was designated a national park in 1971 and spans over 119 square miles. Every year, over 1.5 million visitors come to see the 65 million year old sandstone arches, hoodoos, and canyons that were formed by the forces of water, wind, and drastic temperature change. The park only gets about 8 to 10 inches of rain each year, but it used to be entirely underwater, and now is home to 754 species of plants and animals. That right there is balanced rock, and it weighs as much as 27 blue whales, standing 128 feet or three school buses tall. A little bit taller than me. Ah, and a 45 minute drive later, we had finally arrived. We are... Here, we got 1.5 miles to go, and the sun is rising. Look at that. Let's go. Arches, National Park morning. What a great way to start the day. It is a super way to start. <sighs> this place is so unique. I love it. It's amazing, the colors, the swirling of the rocks. And there she was, standing in all her glory, Delicate Arch, which is also referred to as Cowboy's Chaps and Old Maid's Bloomers. Standing at over 60 feet tall, the light opening inside the arch is 46 feet high. It's illegal to climb, and luckily, the crazy idea, hatched in the 1950s to paint it in a plastic coating to better preserve it, was quickly abandoned. I'm really busy. <laughs> See that back there? That's actually the arch that appears on every single Utah license plate. You know, we were here years and years ago, actually in 2011, and I remember this arch being so small. I know. But now that we arrived here, I think it's massive. It looks much bigger now. Yeah, maybe it's just because we came to this one first and didn't go to some of the other arches. And look at these colors. Literally 
literally looks like a rainbow on the ground. Are we in a candy shop right now? Because <laughs> I sure feel like a kid again. Oh. Aww. Real quick, I want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, AG1. It is the nutritional drink that helps us set the foundation for our strong and healthy lifestyle. It's one scoop or one travel pack once a day, every single day. Not only is it a space saver for us in our tiny home, it replaces multiple other products, which is why it's a premium priced product, but it is so worth it. We've been taking it for nearly two years now, and the improvement that I've seen in my digestion and in our energy, it just gives us peace of mind knowing that we're getting all of the best vitamins, nutrients, and whole food sourced ingredients, like seriously, the best quality. Athletic Greens is the one behind all of the research. So AG1 is where it's at. And by using our link below, you will get five free bonus travel packs along with a one-year supply of the immune supporting vitamin D3 and K2. It's a great habit to start. AG1. For life. <laughs> Before leaving the park, we couldn't resist visiting one, or maybe we should say two, of our favorites, Double Arch. Pretty amazing. Double the fun. The line has definitely grown. It's building. But right now we are headed to the town of Moab. We're gonna take you guys along to see what that's actually like. food truck. <laughs> we are a food truck. Gracias. <laughs> oh, we are back in the U.S., aren't we? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this isn't a taco truck. <laughs> right now, we're making our way from Moab to Monticello, where the domes at Canyonlands are, and that's where Drew and I are going to be staying tonight. But first, there is a hole in a rock that we have to stop and see. There it is. The hole in the rock with the little tiny Jeep on top. And what exactly is the hole in the rock, babes? Well, back in 1829, when the Mormon pioneers used to travel in between Moab and Monticello, this was where they would come to refresh themselves. So it's been a resting stop for centuries now. And then in the early 20th century, the Christensen family came here, and then they started to excavate the giant rock and now they've been able to dig over 5,000 feet into this boulder and build their home. There's now 14 rooms inside of this rock and you can even stay here. Whoa. That's not going to be the unique dwelling that we're staying in this evening but it's a pretty cool stop. Who doesn't like a good hole in the wall or rock? I just want to know how they got that jeep up there. I know right? But it's not musical anymore. That's the one thing I noticed. We can dub some music in. Okay. Aww. I love how it ends right on the bottom for the next rider. You're right, how thoughtful. It's gotta be from the 20s or the 50s. I don't know. It's a good question. Does anybody know? Now that's a Jeep. Those are some heavy tires. Even the chairs and the floor and the steering wheel. But you know what I like? That where the actual license plate goes, there's not one. I can tell you it doesn't take any more than 50 different states of license plates. <laughs> Clever. I'd say that was worth the stop. Yeah, it was quirky, but definitely interesting. Let's just say it was a old time roadside attraction. And away we went from one giant hole in the rock to a beautiful dome on a mountain. It has been quite the day. I'm feeling pretty wiped out at this point. <laughs> been up for a while, but this is gonna feel so luxurious. And we get to stay here for the next three nights. Oh, feeling really grateful and really lucky. Wow, it's 
it's all on its own over here. Whoa. All those solar panels. We've never stayed in a dome before. We have stayed in a container and a potato. And a tree house. In Hawaii and in Panama. Oh, that was like a really cool, unique one in Panama. It was like a human nest. And we've also stayed in... Is there anything else? Oh, and a yurt. We also stayed in a yurt. A snowy NorCal yurt and a Mongolian yurt in Portugal. Oh, and we also stayed in this pod. Probably the closest thing to a dome we'd stayed in before. This is cool. I feel like we're in space. It's like a giant golf ball. Dolphin <laughs> sesame. Mm, exciting! <gasps> Shower. Oh my goodness, I love the wood in here. Wow. wow. It's beautiful. And a toilet. I don't have to empty. <laughs> <laughs> and what's over in this half of our circle? Modern with a twist of luxury cabin feel. Cool. <laughs> That's what I've been wanting to do. Pillows, lots of pillows. <sighs> and what's up there? Like we get our own tree house inside of our own dome. Cool. We can have guests stay. <laughs> Did you invite anybody? Or we can sleep up here one night and then down there another night and then up here another night. <laughs> but you know what this makes me wonder? What is beyond those curtains? Let's find out. Glorious. Oh my goodness. Wow. I think I can see all the way into the lake or something. There's like some huge canyon and water and... It's a big reservoir. Wow. The gorgeous view, the fire pit, the dome, and our beautiful van. I love that it's high elevation here at 7,500 feet. And this dome is known as the Pines, which when you look out, there are pine trees everywhere and the view is just stunning. Domes are amazing to plop right in front of a view like this. Drew and I are all about unique spaces these days because after living in a van for eight years, you've heard us saying this for a while now, if we're gonna be in one spot, we need wherever we're going to be staying to be unique, you know? And it needs to have a lot of adventure around. And these little domes definitely have a lot of adventure with canyon lands right here and arches right over there. And I know we're gonna enjoy these chairs, taking in the view. Dome life. <laughs> So much more space. <laughs> it has a little coffee machine, which we're really, you know, we're all about our coffee these days. A little microwave, which I probably won't use ever, but it does have a little fridge. So we can bring some things from Spirit and stock up. Hey, you see this? Do you remember what this is? A full length mirror? What am I wearing? <laughs> Your adventure clothes. Da -da -da. <laughs> and this place is so much bigger, this dome is, than I would have ever imagined. It is. And what's also crazy is I don't know if I should say this, but they have Wi-Fi. I know you guys might like the idea of us just lounging around for three days in our dome. That is what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a wonderful place to work remotely. And Josh, our friend who we actually haven't met yet, who kind of is one of the masterminds behind this place, he is somebody who has another really exciting project in store for us, but we look forward to meeting him probably tomorrow or the next day. He's actually been in Switzerland, which is also exciting. And it feels so good to be back. And I love these unique spaces. There's nothing like staying in something fun shaped. I love that it's Geodesic. <laughs> One of my big concerns too, when I was talking to Josh was, don't the domes get really cold or really hot? Well, they have super good insulation. That way you can come stay here when there's tons of snow out 
or be here in the blistering heat of the summer because it's climate controlled. There's a little Mr. Heater right over there that I've already cranked up a little bit because it is surprisingly chilly this time of year here. At least this year. It's a kind of weird year for weather. Yeah, they said usually it's pretty warm by now, but there's been a freak cold front. There has been. So now all I really want to do is take a hot shower, make a big giant bowl of pasta. I, I just think. want a cold bevy <laughs> and chill. I call shower dibs. We're gonna rock, paper, scissors for that. <laughs> no, I, I just win. I called it first. <laughs> Never have we recorded from both angles at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a GoPro. GoPro, <laughs> Sony. Sony, meet GoPro. <laughs> meet in the middle. At our banquet. It was pretty magical getting to sleep in what felt like our own tiny planet, watching the stars as they twinkled and glimmered, leaving stardust trails of wishes and dreams all around us each night. These days, it can be easy to let ourselves get carried away by thoughts of the unknowns and what ifs, but grounding ourselves in gratitude, gratitude for each present moment, for the myriad of possibilities that await us each and every day, and for having a community like you to share it all with, well, that's what makes all the difference. We can't wait to see you guys back here for the next episode. One thing's for sure is that not much is certain, but there is always adventure and joy and love to be had and shared. Always. We love you guys. We'll see you back here real soon. You're the best. <laughs>